<laughs> All right, there's one other topic I'd like to discuss before we dive into the book. That's the Pharisees and Sadducees. These two religious groups play a huge role in the Gospels. Where do they come from? What do they stand for? Well, they don't show up by name until after the time of the Maccabees, but the religious division and parties that they stand for go way back, and understanding them helps us understand the Maccabees. Let's start with the Sadducees. You remember that after the return from exile, the high priests became the rulers of the Jewish people. The high priests and the families they marry into start to form a ruling class. They're the aristocrats of the Jewish people. They're the diplomats. As such, they are open to the Gentiles. They welcome peace, treaties, openness, foreign ideas, foreign trade. They care about the temple, about performing proper rituals, about passing on their heritage. They are the priests, after all. But they are theological minimalists. They only accept the Torah as God's word. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, first five books. They don't take the prophets seriously. They don't take the other writings seriously. This is the Sadducees. They're so sad, you see. I don't want to be a Sadducee. Uh, you can tell I have like young children. Uh, let's see. Oh yes, the Sadducees. They only accept the first five books of the Bible. They don't take the spiritual world seriously. They don't believe in angels, demons, or the immortality of the soul. They're materialists. What you see is what exists. They don't believe God is really active in their lives. Their God created the world a long time ago, left it to run on its own, and occasionally shows up to smell the incense. <laughs> what they really care about is acquiring and maintaining their own personal power. That's the Sadducees. That's why I want to say these are, these are tendencies that go way back. They don't really become hardened parties until after the time of the Maccabees. You can still really see these tendencies at work. You can't really make them into hardened parties back in the time of, you know, Zechariah, Ezra, and Nehemiah. You can still see the tendencies, though. The high priests, even in the time, I think, of Ezra and Nehemiah, certainly shortly after, were becoming more worldly, more corrupt, more, uh, more apt to marry into the Gentile families and to allow, you know, I I I idolatrous temples to be set up to please their neighbors, to just keep it all running smoothly. The high priests really are the center of the Sadducee movement and party, yes. The very name comes from Zadok the priest, who is the, the founder of this line of priests. He's the priest who anointed Solomon king back in the day. Who, who, who did that piece of music handle? Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anointed Solomon King, and all the people rejoiced. Do, 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 do. Okay. I'm done. Where are we? Okay, that's the Sadducees. Jesus has very little in common with the Sadducees. He hardly ever engages with them. Uh, once in the Gospels, you see the Sadducees showing up to basically taunt Jesus about the resurrection of the dead. So, let's say there's this one woman, and she marries, and her husband dies, and she marries his brother according to the law of the Levites, and, and he dies, and then the next brother dies, and the next brother dies, and the next one dies, all the way on down. So, in this, this new life, whose wife is she going to be, huh? Uh, for one thing, they're making fun of the book of Tobit. You remember how uh, you had Sarah with her seven husbands? They're almost certainly thinking of that example. So they're making fun of that as, uh, as not real scripture. They're making fun of the idea of the resurrection of the dead and of an afterlife and of a heaven. And Jesus tells them, look, people in heaven aren't married. The resurrection of the dead is real. Oh, and before Abraham was, I am. That's about the only direct dealing he has with the Sadducees until the high priests, Annas and Caiaphas, put him to death because he's a threat to their power. That's Jesus and the Sadducees. Then there's another group of people the proto-Pharisees, they are passionate about scripture and passionate about personal holiness. They belong to the educated middle class. They are most of the scribes and some of the priests and Levites. 
They study not only the Torah, but the histories, the prophets, the wisdom literature, everything they can get their hands on. They believe in an active God, an active spiritual world, and the resurrection of the dead. They are deeply admired by the people as the pious ones, the saviors of the nations, the ones that stood firm, especially after the time of the Maccabees. But as time goes on, they are tripped up by their pride and their desperate need for admiration. They add to the law of God, making it nitpicky and nearly impossible to follow. And then they insist that everyone live like them if they want to be real Jews. They relentlessly judge other people and look down on them. Needless to say, they have nothing to do with those unclean Gentiles. Their holier-than-thou routine not only pushes people away and makes the devout life seem unattractive, it misrepresents God. They paint God as a frowny face in the sky just waiting to smite people. Jesus agrees with a great deal of Pharisee theology. All the writings of the prophets, the resurrection of the dead, all the disputed points, he basically agrees with the Pharisees. But he hates their additions to the law, their judgmentalism, and their hypocrisy. Sometimes he's able to teach and correct them, like Nicodemus. More often, they condemn him as a blasphemer, and he ends up shouting, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Any more reflections on the Sadducees and Pharisees? In the time of Jesus, well, r really ever since the return from exile, the Sadducees, the high priests, had the political power. Still true in the time of Jesus. Back, I believe, in the time of Salome, around 70 BC, she's on our, uh, on our genealogy chart here for the Hasmonean kings. She's the only queen. Uh, she formally forms the Sanhedrin and brings in the Pharisees as part of the ruling body because the Sadducees had become so deeply unpopular as being sellouts. The people really looked up to the Pharisees, but the Pharisees themselves were becoming increasingly unattractive because of their, their judgmentalism and their legalism. And by the time of Jesus, the people want to look up to them but they're getting awfully discouraged as to how they can possibly follow God that way. And some of the priests were Sadducees and some were Pharisees. Can you say the scribes? The scribes could be either one or neither, but they mostly sided with the Pharisees. The Sadducees really ceased to exist after the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, and it's the thinking of the Pharisees that goes on to form the basis of, of rabbinical Judaism as we know it today.